Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video with the making of the Henrik, I would like to just start the process of um, building his body. So there's two ways that we seem to be able to do it. Now, Susanna is working the pieces before they're stitched together with all of her patches. So then when she stitches them together, she's already got him patched and all she has to do is stuff him and then um, she's done. The way that majority of people do it is this particular way where they add the decorative pieces after the body is constructed. Now, the other thing is Susanna hasn't put wire in hers and I'm planning on this video to put the wire in this guy. Now, as you know, I'm making two. So what I'm sort of doing is I'm hedging my bets. I'm definitely going to do this one as per the instructions. But then as I'm watching Susanna's videos come along, I'm sort of trying to make a decision on what I do with my second rabbit. That's the one with all the embroidery all over him. So I'm going to do this one first with the wire and I'm just going to show you a few things that um, I've started today with him and I'll stop and start the video as I sort of work through that process. Anyway, enough talking. The first thing I had to do according to the instructional video that the designer has put out, it is linked below so you can sort of see mine plus, um, plus the original instruction video that goes with it is I cut a piece of wire uh, 52 inches so um, I think that's a pretty good length for my guy if anything maybe it could have been maybe 48 inches but 52 is fine I've then wrapped it in strips of calico to cover the wire so this piece is for the base to hold his body out in structure and then uh, you stitch the fabric in the bottom which I'll, I'll go through in a minute but what I'll do is I just want to show you how I wrapped the wire for his body because I've got to do it for this base piece as well so it's really simple the only thing I found with the big body piece is my calico was only so many inches wide you know straight off of the roll so i had to use three pieces i think it was so when i joined the second piece in to continue wrapping i just put a few stitches with needle and thread so that it sort of kept it all connected otherwise it tends to unravel a little bit so you, if you have some really long strips that you haven't pre-joined and you're using smaller ones like me, you may find that you need a few little stitches as you continue around the process. So just a little tip there. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you could use masking tape if you didn't have access to some fabric, but I'm guessing if you make a scrappy hair, you probably got access to two fabrics and it's just a case of binding the wire now the big piece that goes into the body I then I'll talk and do this at the same time otherwise this video will just be too long the big piece that's going into his body um, I've also shaped to his body I didn't at first I just wrapped it so I got my big piece of wire and I just wrapped it away. And then I shaped it to represent his head. See, so now I'm coming up to the end of this. And this is where a needle and thread was used, just with some stitches to bring all that together. So I've just got a little clip here to hold it until I get cotton and stitch it together. So yeah, because that body is such a big piece, I had to do this three times, get rid of that. Three times I joined it just to, you know, keep everything together. 
if you don't have a little clip, you could use a bull clip. It's just a couple little stitches. random threads there. It'll be interesting to see how they all come together because like I said, Susanna's has no wire, just stuffing, and she pre-decorated the pieces. I'm tempted to try that on my second one, but I just wanna know that the wire is definitely okay not to put in and I'm still, the jewelry's out on that. So I definitely wanna make one with wire. I def I, I think I could pre-decorate the pieces. I think that would work okay. Especially if you find it hard to stitch onto something that's, you know, sitting there in front of you. Well, then maybe, maybe it's a good option for you. Okay, so I'm just checking this shaping of the wire on the body of this rabbit. Because the next thing I'm going to do is put the wire in. Now I did twist it together here just so that it's sort of joined. And this bit, when we've got it stuffed, is going to be inserted up into the base. The base is going to be cinched and stitched closed once all that stuffing comes down to that point. And this wire, you stitch around the wire to hold that little ring into position. It probably will sit there anyway because you've got stuffing coming down to this point and the bottom is sealed. But I noticed on the video that that was stitched in as well. Okay, now... What she seemed to do in the instructional video, which like I said, is linked below, is she works on the head first, of course. She puts her wire in, and then she starts pushing stuffing in. Now, I believe the trick is you don't wanna feel the wire as you put your hand on the top of his head. So you sort of gotta, using your fingers, poke stuffing in and, in and around that wire. So just take your time. And I'm sort of, as I'm, so let's say the wire's there, I'm bringing my hand up with the stuffing. I'm coming up and I'm doing this. I'm sort of wrapping, wrapping the stuffing around it seems to be working now it takes quite a bit of stuffing there's i've got a very big bag sitting here beside me on the floor and i know um susanna was telling me that she put so much into his body then she had to go and buy some more so it definitely is a stuffing muncher so just take your time and work Plenty of stuffing in, and I can't feel the wire. I'll turn it over, I can feel it just there. So let's get a bit of stuffing on this side. There's a fine line to overstuffing, too. You sort of don't want too much stuffing that you distort his face and he doesn't look like a hair but you know at the end of the day is a scrappy hair so I think you can hide a multitude of sins <laughs> because you just stitch fabric in and um, I don't really have a big plan for this fella I've just got a nice green floral rose fabric there which I've inserted into his face some of them It'd be all calico and you'd put a piece of fabric here and then they pinch together to create that fluffy edge. This one I've used the pretty fabric here to build it within to the rabbit. So my fluffy edge will just come up this side. But um, who's to say I don't add more 
I don't know. It's a bit of uh, uncharted territory here. And the beautiful thing about them is you can do anything. Now, as I've, um, you've been watching, I filmed the first videos uh, last year. So you're now middle of the year catching up to where I'm filming again. So this rabbit construction is actually happening in uh, March where the first few videos I did, I think it was like October last year. So months and months and months have gone by and I've finally pulled him back out and I'm finishing him off now. So that's coming along pretty good. So in that time frame, the designer has brought out a new pattern, a cat. So anyone who's interested in doing a pussycat, that's now an option. The only ones that were available when I bought my pattern was Henrik the hare and a fox. So yeah, there's a, a pussycat. The trick is to know how much is too much stuffing. We sort of want to keep a nice shape about him. So it's coming along nicely. We have nearly chewed a whole big bag of wadding. That's interesting. Now I got my wadding from Spotlight in Australia. So the wire, the benefit of the wire is it'll help him to stand up. Having said that, he's got some fantastic legs and he seems to be well proportioned that potentially you don't need to put the wire in. It'll be interesting to see how Susanna goes with him and how she felt the process. Now that is pushing against me there so I'm actually going to untwizzle that because I had joined it I'm just going to leave it adrift now until I get some more stuffing in and then start working it back in because I think that will be the best method yeah so that's going back into his body. Bury that in there so I don't feel it when you give him a cuddle. And that one there. So they're not joined. I've just turned the pieces back in on themselves. pretty good. I can feel the wire there so I'm just going to get some stuffing in front of it. I can see the seams a little bit puckery through here so I'm just going to work a little bit more stuffing in. Same with there. So I'm sort of just focusing on the seams now just to make sure that they're fully extended. And that wire is gone. Okay, I've nearly used a whole bag of wadding. So that's interesting. There's a dint there. So let's get a bit of stuffing up into there on his back. Another one there. So that's coming together quite well. All right, I'm happy with that. So in the bottom of the rabbit, let's turn that around. She just cinched all that in and with some strong cord, she stitches that close. But before we do, we're going to put 
this ring in. Now, how big was the ring? Um, I think I measured it, but I've forgotten the measurement that was yesterday. So I'm going to have to give you a diameter of five inches. Yeah, five inches by five inches. What that is circumference circumference wise, you'll have to do the math and figure that out. I can't remember how we used to do that at school. Goodness me. Okay, so that's just sitting just on the base there. That's just going to give us that nice little edge and you can see it easily there. So what I'm going to do is thread her up. Now there's wire in the legs and there's wire in the arms and it'll be the same principle. Cut yourself a piece of wire. You can always trim it if it's too big and do a loop that's going to go through them. Now I will do that with you. Just So this video is all about getting this little guy so it's just a case of stitching him in so that's pretty simple i might go over and under the wire i think no one's going to see it it's all going to be clad so this will help him stand. Having said that, I think he would stand reasonably well without the wire, but this will just give him that rigidity. I could even suggest that maybe you only need to do this bit, get that ring of wire into his base. Maybe that's just enough to make him stand. Let me know in the comments if you've made a Henrik what you did. Did you do all of the wire or just this little piece at the bottom? So I want to make sure it's got enough fabric there to cinch him closed. Okay, lovely. We could have pinned it just to make sure that it all works, but just going by the seat of my pants here, I'm pretty sure there'll be enough fabric to cinch his little bottom closed. Thread here because I've run out. And I just want to check that I definitely have enough fabric to bring bring it in. Yeah. That'll be fine. Be able to stitch his tush closed. Alright, some more thread. So that didn't take too long. I may not need to stop this video. We're at 18 minutes. Okay. And I still will be able to poke in a little bit extra stuffing. I can feel it's a bit soft there. There'll be a piece of felt or wool cut for the bottom just to cover it when we do the cladding side of things. This is just a bit of support, I believe, stability for the base of your hair. If you wanted to be really precise you could probably have measured all the way up from that raw edge 
and put a mark and that would then ensure that your ring was sitting perfectly flat. So I haven't done that and I'm hoping that doesn't, you know, bite me, but I think it'll be fine. So I'm just coming around the back of him now. Uh, she does recommend in the video that you use a really strong thread to actually cinch it together. Now, I'm just using cotton for this step, but I've got some crocheting cotton to one side here just to get in there and pull it all together so that it's nice and secure. And now we're back to where we were. And his little ring is in. I'm yet to watch Susanna's video from Vintage Blend Studio. She's the one doing this with me in conjunction and see if she actually did this step. But she was saying when I was chatting to her through the week that she wasn't going to. She was going to try it without wire. She was pretty confident she could stuff him enough that the wire wouldn't be needed. So you've got plenty of options with this young fella. And I have a feeling once you make one, you'll be making another. So you can sort of experiment then. There's no wrong way. All right. So that's stitched in. And now it'll be just a case of cinching that close. So the width of which I came up is about two and a half inches. It's a little bit shorter there. It's only two and it's a little bit longer there. So I certainly have curved myself, but that'll be okay. The main thing is that it all comes together um, to sort of hold it tight. Now I do think I need Oh, maybe not put any more in because you don't want a little bulge there. Otherwise, he's just going to keep toppling over. So I'm going to cinch. Oops, a knot on the end would have been a good idea, girl. I'm going to cinch this together now. So I might try a running stitch around. She doesn't really show you in the video, but I'm thinking a little running stitch at least will get the fabric. What's going on here? It's a vintage crocheting cotton, so I've got to be a little gentle with it. It can get a bit twisty and Just going to whiz around that edge just with a, a running running stitch and that'll help gather him in and I, I guess at that point I can see if I need to poke a little bit more stuffing in there I can I can't wait to get onto the cladding side of things it's going to take a while like Let's be honest, to do it properly and to enjoy the process, you've got to take your time with it as you get all those little pieces. There we go. So that's pretty simple. That's going to be fine. I don't think I need any more stuffing. I might just try and push that into there. Yep. And now I'm just going to put some additional stitches in just to secure that base and I think by not having too much stuffing in there allows it to sort of push back up on itself a little bit be my comment yeah that 
that's good. Happy with that. going overboard here but I'm just a few extra stitches won't hurt and like I said there'll be a piece of felt or wool fabric be something go on his bottom there I'm thinking about using this thread as my big stitch to hold all of his scrappy bits on him too so that's my boy I'm just standing him up yeah he's pretty good that's just giving them that nice little flat base there. Okay, so before we leave you, I just wanted to have a look at these legs. So I've stitched them together and I've left this opening here. So that's where the wire will go in. I've cut off a piece of wire. And all I'm going to do is I want to just shape it and then I can wrap it. Now this piece was the second piece I cut for my second rabbit and I know it was 52 inches. So I'm just seeing how much I'm going to need to do those legs. Just about all of it. Okay, so what's left out of that is roughly six inches by two. So there's 12 inches hanging out of the foot and I started with 52. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at that 52 inch because I want to wrap it and knowing I've got this little bit coming out of the bottom here to hold and then I can trim it off afterwards, if that makes sense. So that's how I'm going to do the leg. So we've got time, probably don't have enough fabric. I'm just going to start wrapping. Then the same thing. Um, I might actually put a couple stitches in this as well because I can see that it's going to be wriggled around a fair bit. Where's my needle? And it's really just to secure, secure the um, fabric. I might come out a little bit because if I snip it here and then that can be straightened once I get this in and it'll just sit within that seam. So I'm, I am going to come out a little bit. Just get a bit of a wrap on there. And then start heading up and around. Now let's clip that. You should be able to hold it with my fingers. I've got my needle and thread ready. So I'm just going to just, you probably don't need to do this, but I hate it when it unravels. So that's just a little. Unravels from my needle, mind you. And I would say, without having done this before, I'll end up snipping this excess wire off 
And this little bent bit at the beginning here will just get straightened up into his little leg. Is how I'm seeing this go. And because that'll be quite um, manipulated there, doing this little step here, I think, will pay off. We could probably even, I could have done that. I might yet. Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to snip that. I'm pretty confident that I will not need that excess. So while I'm here, I'm going to finish that completely. Just thinking outside the box here and I'm just going to wrap that around and catch that end right now. Won't matter so much the other end because I'm heading in that direction so it will get done as well. I've got threads everywhere here. There we go. I'm happy with that. It's still a bent little end for me to hang on to. I noticed in one of the photos in the instructions that her piece is still quite long. She hasn't snipped it like I just did. So I hope I haven't made an error there, but I don't think so. The main thing is that it's nice and secure. Now I'll just get my needle and thread and just for the sake of it, continue to stitch that down if I can keep my needle threaded I've got a needle that's got a very big eye so I'm not doing myself any favors here but it will give me what I need just working my way up there a little bit won't hurt just to secure all of that wrapping. Okay, I think that's probably enough. It's probably a bit overkill, but... All right, so now I can continue with the wrapping of my rabbit. Now, this fabric will run out. So I will need to rip myself another piece. I do have a couple scrappy bits left from the other project. So I might be able to use them, but I will need to rip myself some more. I've just torn myself about an inch of fabric straight off of some calico or muslin if you're in America. Working my way around, trying not to distort the shape of that leg too much, but at the end of the day, you can re reshape it. I probably didn't even need to do this, but I wanted to just double check I had enough wire, so I thought I'll just shape it first. but not too hard. The main thing is I don't hook myself in the eye. Got this wire flipping around here. Trying very hard not to. Okay. I'm just gonna go until I run out of fabric. riveting viewing for you. I hope you're all enjoying making your Henriks. There's a few of you. Nice little project leading up to Christmas. Ah, oh, Christmas. Goodness sakes. <laughs> Easter. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay. So I've 
come to the end of that piece and I'm going to start this little piece here and just carry on wrapping. Now, just to make sure it's secure, I'm going to put a few little stitches in there as well. It does feel pretty secure. Maybe I'm starting to get a hang of this. Yeah, it's not too bad. So I'll keep going. But if you felt like it was sort of potential of unraveling, just do as we did before and needle and thread and just pop a few stitches in there. So I'm coming to the end of that little scrappy bit. So might as well use all these little bits. Okay, lovely. And being that I'm going to put my hands down now and go and get some more fabric, I am going to stitch this here. That way I can let it sit on my desk without it falling to bits. I can then go, oh, I need a knot. So where's my clip? Probably could just use a clip. I'm a bit of a sewer, so if there's any chance to pick up a needle and thread... I will. Okay. That'll keep it nice and secure. Alright, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to go and cut myself some more strips. I'm going to wrap the additional leg and arms and then come back and insert and stuff the arms and legs. And that will bring our video to a conclusion on how to do this step okay that should hold that for a moment lovely so that is the start of that leg That should work beautifully and then when that gets to that stage I can just turn this little bit here inside and it'll just slide in pretty confident that that's going to work am I confident enough to snip that I think I am so I'm going to So if that was 52 inches, I just took off a total of five plus another five. So 45, uh, 52, so it'd be 45, 42 inches approximately was needed to do the legs. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it at that and I will be back and we'll pick this up again and finish them off. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, I'm back. So what I've done so far is I've got one leg completed. So that's the wire in, the stuffing in, and I've stitched the bottom closed. Um, one thing I've decided to do is in the body, I got wadding all the way around the wire. This time in the leg, I haven't really stuffed the inside here. Well, it's going to be the inside of the leg because I'm thinking it'll help it sit closer to the body. So just a, just a random thought that might be worth considering. If that was too round, it would be sort of pushing against the body of the um, hair. So just a thought. The other thing is I've done one of the arms, but I did 
stuff all the way around but it's not tight so I don't think that'll be too much of a problem because it's got wire in it you can sort of then bend things if you don't have wire they are what they are so maybe that's a benefit of the wire something to also consider so this little guy I've um, same principle laid the wire out wrapped it inserted it stuffed it and now it's the case of the sealing up the base so I've just finger pressed around the edge and then it's just a case of turning that in bringing them together and you can pin it or just go straight in with needle and thread and stitch those arms closed I'll pin it for the sake of this because I probably won't have time to actually stitch it on video. We've got 20 minutes left of the hour. So I've just got to be a little mindful of our time. So I'm just going to tuck all those raw edges in. So it's pretty much ready just to overstitch. We'll come back to that if we have time. But that's pretty straightforward, I think. Now... Let's have a go at this leg. So I've got my wire twisted and it's just a case of popping it in. So the opening will be there. So I'm just going to shape it to the leg. It's a lot of fun. I was a little bit apprehensive about making the piece at this stage anyway they're pretty easy everything else because I've never actually made um, toys like this well, I've never put wire in them that's probably what I'm trying to say the wire was worrying me but it's been quite easy it's fiddly but well it's not really if your toy was really small yeah it probably would be fiddly I'm going to try and get this side in now and it's just a case of tucking it in. And then remodel, remodel the leg, add some stuffing, and that's it. Well, that seems pretty. What have I done? Something's twisted. It's going to go that side so it sits nice and flat all right I'm going to start up here because I need to get the wire out so I'm like pulling it out to the extremities of it there we go I'll give that nice shape to his hip then I need some wire to go down into the heel I'm just pushing that down into there, supporting it the whole time. It's just a case of working, working your way around your hair. Until you find that you've got all your, your wire where you need it. It's a bit fiddly, but not too hard. twisted over there if I kept those ends out they wouldn't be in my way about now as I try and get my shape so I'm just going to hook them back out get that heel in again it seemed to work better the first time I did it of course I wasn't on camera so I've got my ends out now I think that's a bit easier and just check that <clears throat> everything is yeah, that's, that's good. I'm happy with that. So now it's just a case of stuffing. Now let's think about this. I want him to be stuffed this side because I want to have a flatter, a flatter um, inside of his leg because that's the side that will sit against his body. So it's just a case of working the stuffing in. Now I have a tool here that's helping me push it past the point where my finger can go. 
It's a tool that I actually inherited from a lady who made teddy bears and she cleaned out a craft room and gave me some bits and pieces and this tool was in amongst it and I've never never seen them before. And I thought I'll just pop it away and I'm sitting here trying to put stuffing into young, young Henrik. And um, I was just about to jump up and grab a knitting needle because that's what I've used in the past. And I remembered that I'd got this tool and it's pretty good. So if that was something you were chasing, I'd probably head towards doll makers, teddy bear makers, those types of businesses, because I've never seen those in my travels in craft shops. And this lady in amongst the stuff that I got from her craft room were lots of patterns and she'd bought them from teddy bear shops over the years. So my guess is these are the tricks of the trade when stuffing your bears. So that's pretty good. I'm trying very hard not to overstuff him. I don't really want a bulbous rabbit. I'm just gonna reposition that ankle. Yep, that's good. Now that is the last bit of wadding and that's one kilo of wadding. And you can see I've come up just a little bit short to finish this leg. So that's interesting. You're gonna need a little bit more than probably what you thought. <clears throat> a kilo is a lot. So I'm now into my next bag. Luckily I bought two. Well, I had two rabbits. It sort of made sense, but Oh, there's my husband clinging and clanging around in the kitchen. So I do apologise if you can hear noise. <clears throat> now I'm just going to work, work some stuffing down into that toe. Goodness me. Anything slipping and sliding here. <clears throat> Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm at the point of, <clears throat> excuse me, closing this up. I'm just gonna push that up into there a little bit more. Make sure that that's got its shape. Now these curly ends, you've got a couple options. You could trim them or just straighten them up and tuck them straight back into that foot, which I'm going to do. And I think that'll be fine. Now I'm just going to pop a little bit extra wadding in there. But I do need to start now closing it up. Okay, let's get needle and thread. And that will be all of our pieces completed into the three-dimensional three form, ready for cladding, ready for adding all of our embellishments. So let's just stitch him up. We've got about 10 minutes left. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's all sitting down. Let's get Just take your time and form him up. There we go. That's pretty good. Now, I hope you can see I'm maybe slipping in and out of camera. I'm just catching the two sides with an overcast stitch. Really simple. And that'll secure the bottom of his leg into position. Like I said before, you could pin it. 
that helps, but I find if I just do a little bit at a time, you know, two centimeters or an inch at a time, and just work my way across. And that's it. I hope I haven't missed any. Oh, I know one thing that I think is in the instructions that I didn't do. I might be wrong. I may have just heard it verbally on the U channel, YouTube channel instructions is that if you want it to be like a door stopper, you can put some weight into the body. So before you stitch it up, before you finish him off, you could put in a little sack of sand or stones or just something with a bit of weight in it and that will then help him be a doorstop. So I sort of the thought crossed my mind when I was working on one of the legs here and I thought oh that was something I heard somewhere. I think it's written in the instructions I'm not 100% sure. So really looking forward to the next stage. It'll take a while, but I think you guys will be watching this video into um, late March, early April. And like I said, it's um, early March. So I've got four weeks to get stitching and get in front of you guys. But the next stage is just decoration. I think the nose and all that will be a little bit tricky, so I will revisit those with you as we sort of bumble our way through a plan for that. I can feel that wire there, so I'm just going to bend it down into his body a little bit. I sort of like the idea of the wire, to be honest. I think it's going to allow me to pose him a little bit, Probably only his arms, but I don't know. I've enjoyed it, even though I was very apprehensive. Like I put off making this video for, oh, I'm sure we started in October. So November, December, January, February, four months. I got him to a point where I was like, oh, I've got to do that wiring. And then the Roxy Journal of Stitchery project kicked along and Christmas arrived and suddenly into January and I was like, Susanna, I really need to get Henrik back out and get him, get him done. So he is done. If you guys have been, or if you're new to my channel and you've only just found me because of the Henrik project, welcome. But, um, I plan on doing quite a bit of embroidery to the French general panel that I'm using to decorate the red rabbit. This one's a blue, bluey, greeny, um, yellow rabbit. But I don't know, since, since having a bit of time in between doing the first stages of the videos, I'm thinking I could probably bring some of the embroidery into this guy as well don't know so that's the other leg done and now i'm just going to stitch this we've got time so let's secure the arm and then i'll leave you be and i will see you next week for the next thrilling installment of Henrik the hare and it'll be all the pretty stuff now all the fun stuff oops probably the next bit I'm a little apprehensive about is the eye and how how I'm going to do that I have some real nice teddy bear eyes that I also inherited. So I had thought of using one of those, which I can't for this fellow because he's already stuffed. So it's very hard to get an eye into him. Having said that, the other one, if I make him up or decorate him up prior to actually stitching him together, well, I could potentially use 
one of those teddy bear eyes. So I guess there's a benefit of um, decorating your pieces separately, like all still in pieces, because you could then put one of those decorative eyes on. You could also pop it into position and then stuff your hair would be another way you could do it. It's just a case of having a good think about what you want to do and how what elements you want to use because if it's one of those eyes that has one of those safety clips at the back of them, you would need to be able to get your hand inside to get that little clip on. Alrighty, so we've got our body. So yeah, the eye sits about here and if you wanted one with a, a clip on the back, you would need to get that into position and the decorative fabric around it, then stuff it. Or like Susanna did, she is decorating all of the pieces before she actually stitches them into the shape of the body. So then you've got freedom to do what you need to do. So there we go. So we've got some hands and we've got some legs coming into position, lovely, there we go, Henrik body, it's a bit hard on the camera, I might just come up a fraction, yeah, so they will get attached once they're decorated, his leg sort of goes like that, and being there's a bit of wire in there, I can turn little toes up, I can keep them flat, I can turn hands up, I can bend them in, Oh, I can do all sorts. Wire makes him poseable. All right, I will leave you alone now. That's the basics of how I've put together my Henrik. Hope that helps in some small way. But, um, of course, I think there's quite a few ways you could probably proceed with it, especially once you make your first one. I think you'd probably feel quite confident in creating, you know, some different ways of doing it. All right, and don't forget, if you did want him to have some weight before you do this stage, pop a little sack of something in there. But my boy's not going to have any great duties to do. He's just going to hang around. Or oh, my girl, I don't know. This might be a lady. All right, everyone, I will leave you alone, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.